Each last the rain falls, the world turns laughing green. Little flowers blossom, the air is warm and clean. See the gorgeous lily, its radiant blooms display. May I just as boldly praise God in my own way. Oh, the little flowers and tender curly vines show the maker's glory. Each praise to God returns. Sing all of creation, your maker praises a God. I also will offer my songs to you. The pretty songbirds rejoice and sing your praise. Warble hymns exquisite through sunny springtime days. Nightingales and tree frogs sing praise when it grows dark. Only sees at daybreak and then we hear the lark. All oh, the little flowers and tender curly vines show the maker's glory. Each praise to God returns. Sing all of creation, your maker praises a God. I also will offer my songs to you, O Lord. Please arise as you're able and turn your bodies and spirits to the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, God forgives us our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first lesson this morning is from 1 Kings chapter 3. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart towards you. And you have kept for him his, this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O oh Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or to come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you and no one like you shall arise after you. The word of the Lord. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore obey them with all my heart.
my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Let your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. The second lesson today comes from the eighth chapter of Romans. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those who he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those who he predestined, he also called. And those who he called, he also justified. And those who he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave up everything for all of us, will he not also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for you, your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. This is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels who come out and separate the, will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, while there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Friends, grace and peace to you from God the Creator and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So our sermon title today is Hope Scrolling. Hope Scrolling. That might sound a little bit strange to you, but we certainly will get there. I hope by now you know that I'm not against or anti any technology. I have some serious concerns about more and more powerful weapons, but I mean, things like social media, for example, not anti or against that. Technology like that is just a tool, but the question we have to start asking is, how are we using those tools? Just like a hammer. You can use a hammer to build a house or you can bop somebody on the head with it. It's just a tool. It all depends on how you use it. There are a lot of legitimate questions out there about what social media is doing to our brains and to our politics and to our social lives. But again, it's just a tool. It's one of the reasons we, as the church, will continue to use social media because we have to get some good stuff out there. But it's not all good. Turns out a lot of folks are using this new technology to do something called doom scrolling. Has anybody heard that term before? Please tell me I'm not alone here. Doom scrolling is excessively scrolling through bad news on social media. And a, any basic online search will tell you that it's kind of dangerous and it's not the best way to go about getting your news and interacting with the issues of the day. But lots and lots and millions of people are doing it. Doom scrolling. Any kind of basic search will tell you that it is bad for your mentality, it's bad for your brain, it causes people to be anxious and nervous and overwhelmed and depressed. Suicide rates are skyrocketing, for example, and so this is the way that many of us are engaging with this amazing tool, this communication tool, this new technology. I guess it's not that big of a surprise though. I feel like we've been sort of doom scrolling anytime we've turned on the news in the past, I don't know, 100 years or so. For some reason, you know, one more day clean and sober or um, food pantries or welcoming ministries or people taking care of their neighbors or holding someone's hand in the hospital, that has never really made big headlines, has it? There's one podcaster I listen to who says, the news should just be called, what's wrong? <laughs> Hello, good evening, here's what's wrong. And now for local news, here's the worst stuff that happened the closest to you. <laughs> but it's always kind of been like that. That's how we've engaged with news and with the world. And it's kind of a two-way street. It's sort of what we seek out, but also what sells the most. And so we've always been using technology in that way. But doom scrolling is particularly harmful. I wonder the next time that you are engaging with social media or watching the news, if, if we could be like young Solomon. I love the story of young Solomon. What we don't get the sense of in today's snippet from the book of Kings is that Solomon is just a kid and he was never supposed to be king either. He was like third in line. But all of a sudden, because of this tumult in the land, he's thrust upon the throne. And so he speaks with God and asks for a wise and discerning mind so that he might make good decisions between evil and righteousness, so that he can focus on righteousness, the good stuff, the true stuff, and be a good leader for God's people. I like to imagine that when Solomon asked this of the Lord, that God kind of smiled. He asked for wisdom, but there is so much wisdom just in the asking, right? So God says something kind of interesting. I will do as your word commands. God doesn't say that to many people, but he does to Solomon. No one before you will be, have been greater than you. Nobody that comes after you will be as great as you. It will, do as you have, it will be done as you have said. But I have to imagine that God is smiling, saying, I'm not giving you anything you didn't already have. You just need to be awake to the hope and the good and the true that surrounds you. Uh, just for a quick second, how about that list that Paul lists to the Romans? The things that can separate you from God's love in Christ, not life or death, that'll mess with you if you think about it enough, but not kingdoms or rulers or powers or any of this stuff. To me, that was like our first hope scrolling today. Not doom scrolling, focusing on the negative 
and being overwhelmed and getting fatigued because the problems of the world are just so big, but instead hope scrolling, just being infused with the hopeful, good love of God and starting there. I'm not saying that the pressures and the problems of the world don't need to be engaged with. We certainly need to. But if we're doing it first by doom scrolling, then we are overwhelmed and we're detaching and it's just not working. But if we begin with the hopeful love of God, there's so much we can do. In fact, there's nothing we can't do together. And then we've got the parables that Jesus speaks today. Jesus gives us five and a half parables today. Go ahead back through and count them. Five and a half parables. And it's basic stuff starting with a mustard seed. We've all heard that one before. Later on, Jesus will say, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. But here he says, this little seed goes into the ground and sprouts and grows and birds come and live in it. That's pretty basic. We understand how that works. But the kingdom of God is also like a treasure that's hidden in a field that someone found and buried and bought the land. Ooh, it's kind of mysterious a hidden treasure. Kind of stealthy, that one is. Uh, There's a lot of power in taking each one of these parables and just taking it out and fleshing it out and preaching about it, but today I'm thinking about them as a group. This is a wide-ranging set of five and a half parables, metaphors that Jesus is using for what he calls the kingdom of God. There are lots of different ways we could speak that, though. The kingdom of God could be thought of as God's dream for the world or the kingdom that Jesus brought into the world and will bring fully one day, or God's hope for us, or God's will. It's like a mustard seed that sprouts and grows, but it's also like a fine pearl that a merchant sells all he has to get this one pearl. And it's like a net that drags up all these fish. It's a wide-ranging list. But to me, it's like the opposite of doom scrolling. It's hope scrolling. It's a rapid fire succession of ways that we can think of and engage with the kingdom of God in everyday life. So that that's where we can start. Because the problems of this world are very real and God needs partners in this world to overcome the evil with the good and with the true. But if we're paying attention to what Jesus says, the hope and the truth is all around us. We just have to be awake We have to be motivated by it. We have to seek it out and find it and use it. The hope of God in Christ surrounds us every day. So we can ask for a wise and discerning mind. We can remember the list of Paul to the Romans. Nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. We can remember the parables of today and remember that we are just surrounded and infused by the good love and hope of God. If we're gonna be partners with God in this world, we have to join God in the hope that it can get better and that we can do something about it. Doom scrolling won't get you there. Hope scrolling definitely will. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So the people, that's you, your response after each hear us, O God, is your mercy is great. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Almighty God, 
We pray for the church and all servants of the gospel. Equip rostered and lay ministers to proclaim that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Form confirmands and catechumens into disciples. Hear us, O God. Gracious God, we pray for the well-being of creation. Safeguard the environment, clean polluted rivers and lakes, preserve the mighty tree and the tiny mustard seed, and send advocates for sustainable practices. Hear us, O God. Compassionate God, we pray for the nations. Instill in all who govern the ability to discern between good and evil, free those who are oppressed, and protect those facing danger. Promote peace across the world and in our towns and neighborhoods. Hear us, O God. Merciful God, we pray for all in any need. Protect those fleeing from war. Shelter any who are in poverty. Clothe the naked. Soothe all who grieve. And heal the sick, especially Karen, Melba, Marlene, Ray, Logan, Chuck, Tyra, Dottie, Brooklyn, Trudy, Lori, Jace, Dan, Donna, Dixie, Marge, Bob and Emily, Bobby, Tina, Becky, Glenna, Les and Sheila, Emma, Joanne, Tyra, and the family of Marge Cox. Hear us, O oh God. Your Holy God, we pray for this congregation, both those gathered today and those absent from our assembly. Grant safety to travelers and refreshment and safety for children attending summer camps or community programs. Give direction to any experiencing life transitions. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for your saints who now rest from their labors. Inspire us by their witness to treasure the gospel and continually nourish us with your grace. Hear us, O oh God. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray in the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another. Our offertory hymn is Let the Vineyards Be Fruitful on page 181 in the front of the hymnal. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. 
ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son, by your spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is sent forth by God's blessing, number 547.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.